Continuing economic development efforts was a priority discussed during Monday night's Scotch Bluff City Council meeting. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, a grassroots effort has begun to keep economic development rolling in Scotch Bluff for another decade. The city's economic development plan was first approved in 1995, amended in 1999, and again approved in 2004. Economic Development Director Sharia Tooth says the funding, which comes from a portion of sales tax, is used to enhance business and commercial investment in Scotch Bluff and surrounding communities. Due to the success of this program to date, it's brought over 1,200 new jobs and over $21 million in investment to help our city be able to grow. So the city now desires to extend funding of the program and to amend the plan in total as provided in the amendment before you. Charles Liskey is on the new committee and says that both the city's sales and use tax and economic development plan will be on Scotchbluff's ballots as Propositions 1 and 2. He says the group's goal is to inform residents about the goals and impacts of the two propositions. We've developed a, a sheet, and I can leave a, a stack of these here, that kind of what we'll be doing for the public, helping them understand the importance of the sales tax and also uh, the importance of the economic development program. He also noted that there has not yet been any support from Twin Cities Development or the Chamber of Commerce, something that Councilmember Jordan Colwell says will need to be remedied. Normally, um, you would see the Chamber or TCD or an organization like that take lead in this, but um, they're not feeling like they're in a position to do that, and I know how important renewing the city sales tax is, how important LB40 is. The Chamber of Commerce needs to support this, so I know that they're in a transition, but there's no excuse why the board of directors and our community members can't help us. Yeah, every, it's kind of like with the perfect storm, a lot of transitioning happening and switching of roles. So it's been kind of interesting to navigate, but those conversations can definitely be had again, and we need to um, rally together and help support this. The group will be spending the coming weeks working on the ideal ballot question language while also working on gaining more support from the community to allow the next economic development plan to continue until October of 2035. Well, the Alliance Police Department has a new piece of equipment officials say will provide an extra set of eyes to help keep the community safe. A new camera trailer will debut this week, purchased with money from a Rural Violent Crime Initiative grant. Police Chief David Levitt tells KNB News there were other higher priorities he may have wanted to address, but that just wasn't possible. Grants are very limited in scope as to what you can purchase, um, but camera trailers were an option, and with Heritage Days coming up and some of the other activities that take place, especially during the summer, um, I thought it would be a, a good investment, something that we could really use here in the community, and then beyond events, of course, you can place these camera trailers based on crime trends, requests from the community, requests from business owners, etc. So they can be a really great tool. Levitt says the trailer will be a type of force multiplier, allowing surveillance in an area where an officer may not be available, as well as a potential deterrent when placed in a neighborhood or near a business. He says while some may consider the unit an extension of Big Brother, that's not the case, since it will only be deployed in public spaces where there is no expectation of privacy. We'll have more news right after this. Looking for free instead of fees? Platte Valley Bank can help you keep your finances moving forward with no ATM fees. Whether you're headed to the lake, the mountains, or just to the grocery store, you can enjoy the freedom of free ATM access anywhere, anytime. Platte Valley Bank. You belong here.
Pet waste and water don't mix. Animal waste decomposes in water, releasing nutrients, which deplete the oxygen fish and other life need to survive and encourage harmful algae growth. Animal waste also has disease-carrying bacteria, making contaminated water unusable. It's easy to prevent pet waste pollution. Simply pick up your pet's waste and dispose of it in a trash can and avoid letting your pets defecate within 200 feet of our community's waterways. Tri-City Stormwater reminds you it's our water, our responsibility. Welcome back. The composition of the Scotchbluff County Tourism Advisory Committee and interaction with the county board dominated the commissioner's meeting this week. During discussion of the Scotchbluff Monument Superintendent seat on the advisory panel, fellow tourism board member Kim Johns was critical of liaison and Commissioner Charlie Knapper criticizing him for failure to attend monthly meetings and circumventing the advisory board on several issues. John's told commissioners there's a disconnect in the process as it currently stands. This process worked seamlessly before, and it worked in the way that the, the statutes designed it to. But it's supposed to be a culmination of various tourism people, various professionals, and so you get different viewpoints. Knapper said the original agenda item was brought up after conversations about the composition of tourism boards elsewhere and questions from the public about grant decisions. He said when tourism advisory members have the ability to be grant beneficiaries, such as those from attractions or running events, that's a sticky situation. Right now, everyone on that board can come and ask that board for money, except for Kim. But everyone else on that board can come and ask for money. That's not appropriate. It would be more appropriate for people who can't ask for that money to be on that committee. That would be more appropriate. So that is why I believe the makeup of the committee should be made up of business people. The advisory panel has seven members, up to three of which who can be tied to lodging, but state law allows the remainder of the panel to be determined as the county board sees fit. Knapper noted with his schedule, he had asked the advisory board to move the time of their monthly meetings, and the board ultimately took no action on the matter. imagined retirement in a place where we could enjoy our golden years, where adventure and friendship are the only items on the schedule. The Garden Homes at Northfield gives us the luxury we planned for and peace of mind when it comes to convenience, safety, and comfort. We never have to stop and think about the day-to-day -day upkeep. We love to explore abroad, but most importantly in our backyard. So much to do, so much to see. Here at Northfield, we get the protection of life care incredible tax benefits, and secured rates for aging services. It's peaceful knowing that if our needs change, we'll be taken care of. And most importantly, that our kids will never have to make any tough decisions. There never seemed to be enough time to do all the things we wanted. Now we get to focus our energy on enjoying what this community has to offer. At the Garden Homes, life is ours again. A place we had dreamed about. A chance to focus on us. This week's featured pet of the week, we meet Pudge, a terrier American Staffordshire mix. Staff says Pudge is his name and it describes him perfectly. He's a thick boy with a goofy, loving personality. His adoption cost is just $100 and that includes his neuter, microchipping, and all vaccinations. To meet Pudge or any of the cats and dogs available for adoption, you can head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society daily during normal business hours.
This isn't just a beautiful hospital. It's the home to exceptional patient care. This is where specialty clinics meet your needs. This is where a friendly smile, a warm hand, and an empathetic ear exist to care for you. This is us. Box Butte General Hospital. Great things are happening here. Welcome to Kelly's Liquor, your liquor cabinet. Whether you're a wine enthusiast, a whiskey sommelier, a tequila connoisseur, or you just love your beer, Kelly's has the best selection of what you're looking for. Family owned and operated since 1946 and right on 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Come see us today at Kelly's Liquor, your liquor cabinet. And remember to be a good neighbor. Don't drink and drive. Kelly's Liquor, West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Midweek Community Calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank. calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. Santa in the pool? Oh my! 
Renewal by Anderson's incredible Christmas in July 2024 event is so great that even Santa is shocked. 20% off, no money down, no interest, no payments for 18 months. No payments until 2026. Windows, patio, and entry doors from Renewal by Anderson. And Renewal's acclaim and ensemble lines are the best of the best. Imagine no payments until 26. Please visit rbawyoming.com now. It's Christmas in July at Renewal by Anderson. It's so good even Santa is shocked. Tired of feeling stuck? Not sure if you are on the right track? Platte Valley Bank can help keep your finances moving forward with checking account options to fit your lifestyle and an online account chooser to make finding the right account easy. Control your financial future with helpful budgeting tools and automatic savings plans. Now is the time to enjoy the ride with Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. And finally tonight, it's been a hot summer so far. But the heat has been especially hard for staff and patrons at the Leeds Scottsville Public Library. For years, the cooling tower at the library has been acting up, and crews have been working to get things fixed. City Manager Kevin Spencer says that this week, he expects the system to be fully back up and running. You know, the library cooling tower, the, the uh, staff over there have been champions. Uh, they haven't had it air conditioning all summer so we're hoping to get that wrapped up for them soon that has that project has been challenging to say the least the three hundred eleven thousand dollar contract went to johnson controls of cheyenne last august but they had a timeline of up to 24 months for full installation well that is it for us this time thank you so much for tuning in stay safe out there we'll see you here next time